Spotosera is a popular retro gaming operating system that is available for a number of different devices and platforms. This guide will focus on Spotosera with the Valve Steam Deck. Though most of what you'll see in this video will be applicable to Spotosera on other devices, running Spotosera on the Steam Deck is a great solution if you want to keep your retro gaming separate from your PC or Steam games. That is, you can set up Bodicera exactly how you want it with your games, favorite themes, etc. running exclusively from a micro SD card and easily swap between SteamOS or Bodicera. You will, however, want a separate card dedicated to it. Bodicera supports many different emulators, likely more than any other emulation solution available today for the Steam Deck. That is, you can emulate classic gaming consoles, computers, and some recent systems as well. In addition to this video, there is also a written guide to accompany everything discussed here. It's rather ironic that a guy that makes YouTube videos still prefers to have both a written and video guide. Written guides are more easily searched than videos. While videos are helpful for visually demonstrating how things work, both forms of content complement each other. You can find the written guide for this video at wagnerstechtalk.com forward slash sd dash in addition, as I receive questions or solutions to issues, I can keep the guide updated with the latest information long after this video has been released. I hope you find this guide helpful. I'm John, and welcome to Wagner's Tech Talk. Before we install Botocera, it's important to provide a brief look at a few accessories I'm using that may make it easier for you. The Steam Deck has a USB-C port on the top. If you would like to attach a keyboard, mouse, or USB-A connected thumb drive, hard drive, or SSD to transfer files, then a dock will certainly make this process easier. I've installed a number of different operating systems to a micro SD, including Botocera. I personally like this 10-slot card case holder as it allows me to label each card and keep my micro SDs organized. Let's dive in on how to install Botocera to a micro SD card directly on the Steam Deck. You'll of course need a micro SD card. I'll be using the Samsung EVO U3A2 card which provides very good performance. Just insert the card into the micro SD slot on the bottom of the deck. As I will be using a dock, I'll plug in the power cable, a keyboard and mouse, and an HDMI connection, so I'll be able to show you the process more clearly using a video capture device. Now I'll plug in the USB-C cable from the dock to the deck, and power on the deck, and the video will transition to my external monitor. Press the Steam button, then move down to Power, and select Switch to Desktop. Once in Desktop mode, we'll launch the Firefox browser, and visit botocera.org forward slash downloads. There, we'll find the download link for the Steam Deck. The download may take a little while, so we'll start with that one. In a separate tab, visit bellina.io forward slash etcher. Click the Download Etcher button and download the version of Linux x64 by clicking the download link to the right. Now that the downloads have completed, we'll go to the Downloads folder and launch the Bellina Etcher application. Click Execute and then Continue if prompted. Next, we'll select the Flash From File button and select the image of Botocera that we just downloaded and then click the Open button. Click the Select Target button and make sure that the target micro SD is selected and click the checkbox beside the card. Now click the Select One button and we're ready to flash Botocera to the card. Just click the Flash button. As a safety measure, you may be prompted that you are about to erase an unusually large drive. Verify that everything is correct and if so, click the Yes I'm Sure button. If you have previously assigned a password for the super user, you may be prompted to enter it here. And now, Botocera will begin writing to the micro SD card. This process will take a few minutes, so I'll speed past it. From here, we can close out of Etcher, then move down to the lower left of the taskbar, click the Steam button, select Shutdown, and go ahead and shut down the Steam Deck. If you have a separate computer, you can perform all the steps just shown on a PC or Mac also, which I'll very quickly demonstrate. Download the Steam Deck image from botocera.org forward slash downloads, then download Etcher from bolina.io forward slash Etcher. 
Select the download for your operating system, such as Windows X64, and go ahead and install it. Then launch Etcher, select Flash from File, select the image, select the target micro SD card, and click Flash. These steps are all documented on the written guide mentioned earlier. Use whichever one is most preferred by you. Now let's discuss how to boot Botocera from the micro SD card that we just flashed. With the Steam Deck powered off, hold the volume down and quick press the power button. The Steam Deck boot manager will now appear. Use the D-pad or left stick to select the SD or MMC card from the list and press the A button. A blue screen will appear briefly while the card is resized and Botocera will then start up. There are two main buttons you'll want to become familiar with on the Steam Deck. The first is the location of the select button in the upper left. The other is the start button on the right. These two buttons will be used for accessing most of the settings we'll be covering and you'll find it documented in the written guide as well. When Botocera first boots, the background music is playing and so you won't find it too distracting, we'll go ahead and turn that off. Press the start button, move down to sound settings, then front end music, and toggle the switch to the off position. When you press B to go back, the background music will stop playing. Botocera does include some great freeware games. This is why when Botocera starts up, you already see a few systems showing up for Commodore 64, PC Engine, NES, SNES, etc. While we're here, let's quickly check out a cool SNES port called Classic Kong, which of course is similar to the classic Donkey Kong. It's a lot of fun, and I'm glad to see that it's included. When you're done playing a game in Botocera, press Select and Start at the same time to return back to the game list. Now let's discuss how to connect Botocera to our Wi-Fi network. This is helpful for a number of reasons, such as copying BIOS and ROMs, updating Botocera, downloading themes, and more that we'll cover in just a moment. But first, let's connect to our Wi-Fi network. Press the Start button, then move down to Network Settings. Select the option on the bottom to enable Wi-Fi, and then move down and select Wi-Fi SSID. This is your Wi-Fi network name. Select yours from the list. Mine happens to be Lucas. We'll now enter our Wi-Fi key or Wi-Fi password. It's the same thing. Select the option. You can use the D-pad or joystick to enter the password or the touchscreen. Once done, press the Enter button. Now press the B button to go back, and you'll see this dialog indicating that Wi-Fi has been enabled. Press A and go back into Network Settings. Here you'll see the IP address used by Botocera and that it has been connected. You'll want to make sure you see the same. As we progress in this guide, some sections will expect the network to be connected. You may also want to jot down the IP address. Botocera receives updates fairly frequently. In this next section, I'll show you how to update Botocera to the latest build. If you recently downloaded the most recent image from the website, you may still not have the latest version. Let's check it out. As mentioned when we downloaded Botocera, it is currently in an intermediate status. That is, when updating Botocera, you need to select an update type of beta. This is likely to change soon, however, first check botocera.org forward slash download as it will let you know which update type to use to make sure you're running the latest version. To update, press start, select updates and downloads, move down to the update type and select beta. Only use a different value here if you verified from their website that it's no longer listed as intermediate. Now move down and select Start Update. If a new update is available, you'll be prompted if you want to apply it. Go ahead and select Yes, and the update process will take a little while, so I'll go ahead and fast forward through it here. With the update now applied, we'll move down to Quit and select Shut Down System. After Botocera shuts down, remember to press and hold the Volume Down button and quick press the Power button. Then select SD MMC option from the Boot Manager to boot back into Botocera. Now let's briefly discuss BIOS and ROMs and how to apply them to your Botocera installation. 
If you're new to emulation, there are two main types of files that may be needed. The first is the BIOS. BIOS is the firmware used to provide runtime services, hardware initialization, and basically tells the emulator how to interact with these components. Many emulators require BIOS files in order to emulate a particular gaming system. Similarly, ROMs are the games themselves. It's the program code from the original game that may have originated on a cartridge, CD or DVD, floppies, etc. Both BIOS and ROMs are copyrighted material and I'm therefore unable to provide any direct links. However, if you read this section closely in the guide, you'll find some good hints on where to go to locate them using your favorite search engine. Now let's assume we've downloaded our BIOS files to a PC and want to copy them across the network to Bodicera running on our Steam Deck. To do this, locate where you downloaded the archive, and you may need to extract the archive using 7-zip or similar tool. In this example, the archive contains BIOS, saves, and a few ROMs. To copy them to Bodicera, on the left, we'll enter backslash backslash Bodicera and press enter. We'll then see a single shared folder, simply called share. Within the share folder, we'll find subfolders for BIOS and ROMs, and we'll copy both of these types of files to their respective folders. Alternatively, you can also use backslash backslash in the IP address to get to the same location. You shouldn't be prompted to enter a login, but if you are, the default user is root and the password is Linux. To copy the BIOS files from my PC across the network to the Bodicera share, I'll simply select and drag them and select copy here. There are a lot of files to copy, so I'll speed past it. If prompted to replace the files, just select replace. Now you may wonder how to check if the BIOS files are missing. Within Botocera, you can easily check if you're missing any BIOS files. Press the start button, select game settings, scroll down until you see missing BIOS check. From there, the list will show any BIOS files that are missing. That is, if you have any games that won't start, you may want to make sure the BIOS files were copied. If you enter the ROMs folder within Botocera, you'll find a large list of folders for the various systems that Botocera supports. In each folder, you'll find a single .txt file, or text file. If you open the file, it will identify what file extensions are supported by the emulator. In the case of the Atari 2600, it supports .a26, .bin, .zip, or .7z or 7-zip extensions. Now I'll copy a few Atari 2600 games from my PC over to Botocera. Simply select the files and copy them to the Atari 2600 folder. You would then repeat this for any additional games you want to copy to any of the various emulators. Do note the games won't immediately show up in the list in Botocera. Let's switch back over to the Steam Deck and we'll update the game list. Now that we've copied some games, it's very easy to update the game list. Press the Start button and select Game Settings, then Update Game List. You'll be asked if you really want to update the game list. Yeah, let's do it. Now, when we navigate the systems, we'll see I snuck in a few main games, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. And of course, our Atari 2600 games are also showing up. If you have your game stored on a USB thumb drive, hard drive, or SSD, using a dock, you can connect the drive directly to the USB port and press F1 on the keyboard to bring up Bodicera's file manager. This method is much faster for copying large files and is documented in more detail on the written guide. Now let's discuss the scraper and aspect ratios. If we select MAME, notice we don't have any artwork for the games. We can easily fix this by using what's called the scraper. Press the start button, move down to the scraper option. Here we can scrape from a number of sources such as Screen Scraper, the Games DB, HFS DB, and Arcade DB. For this demo, I'll use Arcade DB. Under the scraper settings, you can make adjustments based on your preference. Under Systems Included, in this case, only MAME is relevant, but with other scrapers, you'll see additional systems. Now move down to Scrape Now to begin the scraping process. This will take a few minutes, so I'll go ahead and skip forward. Now that the scraping is done, 
we need to update the game list to see the updated artwork. Press start, select game settings, update game list, select yes, and now we see the artwork for our games. While we're discussing MAME, there is another thing I'd like to show you. Let's launch the classic game Galaxian, which was released two years before Galaga. If you press the select button, it'll insert a credit. Press start to start the game. If you launch a vertically oriented game, such as Galaxian, you'll notice the aspect ratio isn't correct, but we can easily fix this. I'll press select plus start to exit the game. From the game list, press and hold the A button for a few seconds until you see the menu appear on the right. Select advanced game options, select game aspect ratio, and at the bottom of the list, select core provided. Now when we launch the game, we'll find the aspect ratio is correct, and we can enjoy the game. If you want to customize the game list to show more games, you can do this rather easily. Press the select button, move down to game list view style, and you can change it to a style that you prefer. Myself, I like detail, so I'll set it to that. And when you go back, the game list will now show many more games as well as details about the game. Downloading new themes is a great way to improve the look and feel of Botocera. By default, a single theme is pre-installed, but let's add a few more. You'll of course need to have set up your Wi-Fi connection, as we discussed earlier. Then press Start, move down to Updates and Downloads, and select Themes. From the list, you can browse the list of available themes and simply press A on one of interest and select install. Any themes installed will do so in the background, so you can continue to install more themes while they are being downloaded. I'll go ahead and download a few, and then we'll take a look at some of them. To apply a new theme, press start, move down to user interface settings, press A on theme set, and select one of the newly installed themes. When you back out, the new theme will be applied. Let's take a look at a few of them. We've reached the end of another video. I hope what you saw here and the written guide will make it a breeze to set up Botocera on your Steam Deck. Remember, the written guide will get updated as new information is available, so please do take a look. For those that have the Inreal Air glasses and curious if they work with Botocera, well, they do. I did have to go into system settings and change the audio output to Inreal Air to hear the audio through the glasses. However, they do work. Have you installed Botocera to the Steam Deck? What do you think about it? Please comment below and share your experience. I know it's a bit annoying to be reminded to click the like and subscribe, share, all that kind of stuff, but it really does help the YouTube algorithm. Your support is always appreciated. Thank you so much for watching, have an awesome day, and I look forward to talking with you again very soon.